Hello and welcome back to our second part of UiPath Integration Services tutorial. And in this part, we'll talk about how you should be able to configure ServiceNow to communicate with the UiPath Integration Services. As we briefly talked about, to integrate the UiPath with the ServiceNow, all you need is a client ID and the client secret. And most of the organization, these will be provided by your ServiceNow administrator. So we'll quickly go and see how we should be able to configure ServiceNow so that we can communicate with the ServiceNow for UiPath integration services. Those who are experimenting and they don't have access to their enterprise service now, what they can do is they can create a developer account on a ServiceNow portal that's basically provides you a 10 days free instance to experiment the thing. All you need to do is keep your new instance active by developing something or login into the developer site every day. And if your account is inactive for 10 days, it will be reclaimed and it will be released for other developer to use. So this is my developer account and I already have an instance that is running. So once you log in into the ServiceNow portal, you will see your instance listed and you should simply by clicking on your instance or start building, you should be able to navigate to the ServiceNow portal. So that's what I listed as a URL in a slide that I have shown you. So let's wait for a couple of seconds for this page to appear and then I'll showcase you how you should be able to configure your ServiceNow instance to communicate with UiPath authentication services. So the first thing to communicate with the service now, what you need to do is you need to click on application registries. Okay. So when you click on application registries, or simply you can also you know go to the system auth which is at the bottom and click on the application registries, you will see list of all the applications, those are registered with the service now to communicate. And you can see at the bottom that I have created a UiPath demo. So what I can do is for you to use it, I'll simply click on a new, okay? And then you need to select the first option, because this is external client to communicate with the UI path. And here, what you need to do is uh, give a unique name so that it can be identified. So let me say UI path integration, right? And then this you can leave as a blank. But one thing that you need to notice, you need to give this information mandatory and what is the information you can find that information on my slide here so which is nothing but this callback url that means when something some information has to be passed which url it will hit again to send the information so this is a url basically provided by the ui path so you don't need to do anything you need to simply type is add is days if you want to put your logo to be displayed, you should be able to put it here. Otherwise, you don't need to do anything. Click on submit. The moment you submit it, you will see that your new application registry is at the bottom. So click that again. And then we need three information for our UiPath integration services to work, right? So how? I'll showcase you what all information you need. So as I told you, I am going to work with ServiceNow connector. So I can search that connector from here or I can simply go to the connections, click on add connection and search that from here. So I'll click on that. And then when you click on that, it will ask you for three things. One is a site URL, then client ID and the client secret, right? 
So let's quickly go back to the screen where we have configured that. So this is a client ID. I'll simply copy it and paste it into the information that is required for connecting the service now. And then the second information that I need is client secret. So you need to click on this lock pad and then you should be able to copy the client secret and then you need to come back and put the client secret here and then the third thing that you need to put is the URL right. So URL is nothing but the URL which is here which says instance of your service now right. So you can simply copy paste the first part of the URL and put it into the integration services URL which is here. And the moment you put it and click on connect, a pop-up window will appear which will ask you or which will ask for a consent so that your service now can communicate with UiPath orchestrator, right? The required information basically it's asking for account permission so that the communication between the service now and UiPath orchestrator can happen. So the moment you click allow, your connections will be succeeded and you can see that connection has been succeeded now. So with the three information which is listed on my PPT, you need an instance URL, you need a client ID and the client secret that need to be copied and then the callback URL, you should be able to communicate with the service now instance all right so now once you are able to connect with the service now instance now you should be able to communicate with ui path and the service now the next step that we need to do is we need to use this connector connection to start building our all right guys, so let's talk about how we should be able to integrate UiPath integration services uh, with the service now. So the first thing that you need to do before using the service now connection that we have built into you know any project, what you need to do is you need to go to the manage package and you need to install the package which will be responsible for getting the required information from the service now, right? So similar to you know uh, the way we install any other you know activities what we need to do is we need to install service now activity which is this one so you will see you know couple of service now activities so here we you need to make sure the activity that you are using is supported by the cloud integration services right so the one which is here is basically nothing but a old legacy way of communicating with the service now and this one is a a way through which it can communicate with the integration services right so this you can use it and for now sake of simplicity i am using the you know uh, 4.0.1 uh, 4 now i can you know update it or let's uh, for sake of simplicity let's keep it as it is okay now the second thing that you need to do is let's create a blank you know xaml file and now once you have activities installed, you will be able to see the service now here, right? So the first thing that you need to do is bring the service now scope into the, you know, studio canvas and then you need to configure the connection, right? And the moment you cl click on the connection, whatever the connections that you have built so far, right? So you have a this test service now connection that connects with the service now. So those connections will be by default listed here, right? So if you have multiple connection, you should be able to see all those connection. Here you should be able to test the connection. Okay. And then you should be simply saving it. The moment you click on save, the communication setup between the UiPath orchestrator and the service now has been set up. So the next thing that we need to do is we need to think it through what information we need to pull from the service now, right? So say for example, if you want to pull the incident information so what we can do is we can drag and drop this get record activity so the moment you drag and drop the get record activity there are certain properties to it 
and the most important property that you need to basically uh, you know uh, pull here is by status because you need to check that whether the record that you are trying to fetch is you are able to not or you should be able to you know raise a exception in that case and then click on configure object and from the drop down you should be able to read any information that is inside the service now so i have selected the table which is called incident what i am trying to do now or trying to go, uh, do now is i'll be reading the service now information which is you know basically uh, which will be helping me to get the detail of my incident from service now portal right so this is the incident and the information uh, inside this particular incident i need to fetch into my automation right so you can see a couple of columns are here description status closed open number and all those kind of thing this is a closed incident but you know uh, we'll configure how we should be able to get all of these required fields with the help of just passing the sys id so for each incident or you can simply say the way data is stored in a service now communicates with the help of sys id so for each incident there will be a sys id so you need to copy that sys id to get the information okay so i have copied this sys id information and i'll be passing that value here or what you can do also is i'll also want to read some information from the incident table description so i'll put this both this so both of these fields are available here now so for value i'll post the sys id which i copied from the service now portal and then i'll create a variable okay called v description okay and then i'll create a variable called v s description right and then i i am put it done so this way you are done with the configuration now i have those two variables if you look at those variables are defined here so i'll put that into a test service now workflow just to set up the global scope and let me print that information by using a log message so i'll put a log message and then i'll put that as a info and then what i'll do here is i'll be simply printing incident description using the variable concatenation right and let's quickly save it and let's run it so the moment you start running it you will see that i have passed that sys id and it is started running and you can see that the description of incident is this wid type status and description right so this is what we try to read the information from here and if you look at the incident you should be able to see these are the description that is available on the portal that means you are able to communicate between the service now and ui path right similarly if you want to update some record right or you want to you know delete some record so you should be able to use update record activity and steps will remain same so you need to select the incident table say for example if you want to update it okay and uh, this is ignore this right now i'll copy the sys id of this particular incident i'll go back to studio okay and it's still it's taking time i'll cancel it and let, let's do it again it's an incident okay and now what we can do here is i need to set the status or a close note and status okay and 
means inside intercept put this as a done okay so now you should be able to pass the sys id here and this state and everything works on you know uh, numeric values right so what i can do i can pass the value as 5 and i can pass the value here as 3 i'll explain you why i am putting these values okay so for now ignore that and incident is closed okay and now let's test it okay and now run this workflow So you see, we are able to update the record and now we'll quickly go back to the tick incident ticket that we have created. And now you can see the status of the ticket which we have created. Uh, sorry, not this one. Close this, you know, window just to for sake of simplicity. And you can see the change here it was on hold now it uh, on hold was closed empty because i have changes right you can see the date time right so this way you should be able to update the incident as well all right so we are good with this how we should be able to configure the service now how we should be able to fetch the service now records and in the next part we'll see how my uipath studio will read the information from the triggers and then perform the task required for the automation right 